Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor. A few years ago I bought a very old and quite famous wooden sailing yacht for the price of one dollar and since then I've been rebuilding that boat from the keel up with the help of a lot of amazing people. So this video is going to be a little bit different from normal, it's going to be a sort of day in the life starting from this morning and showing a bunch of the stuff that normally goes on in the workshop and in the boat and that's going to include a sort of overview of the project as a whole, detailing all the different jobs that different people are up to at the moment and the progress that they've made. Good morning, so I'm just on my way to work, it's a short commute from the house I live in. Entering the boatyard now. There's Shipwrights Co-op over there. There's our local coffee shop, Sunrise Coffee. Some fishing boats. This is the uh, the shop co-op at Neighbours. And here's my workshop. All right, it's just about eight o'clock and uh, looks like the guys are just arriving. I'm only counting me to look like we're on time. <laughs> it's just about eight o'clock, that's <laughs> the biggest lie. Good morning, what time actually what is time it? What time you call this? What time is it really, Patty? All right, let's look, let's look it up. Let's How late call are you? me out. 8.05. Yeah, well, you're still the earliest out of everyone, <laughs> apart from me. <laughs> yeah, good afternoon. Well, Patty. and Clifton. How's Cliff doing? I love Tuesdays. He loves them. <laughs> Ask me how I like Tuesdays. How do you like Tuesdays? Worst day in the whole week. Thursday's the one. Tuesdays are the worst days. What are you freaking out about down here, Clifton? Anyway, it's f***ing gorgeous. Mind your language. Uh, your companion way is gorgeous. <laughs> oh, did something get varnished? I walked in and there's so much gorgeous. I don't Woo! Know what so this is my office uh, in the loft the workshop and one of the first things I do in the morning is come up and um, write a list of all the things that uh, I know I have to do today. Pretty much everyone's arrived at the shop now and uh, some mornings twice a week we have a little meeting where we go over what we're doing in the week. We don't normally stand quite this close together but uh, we're doing it for the camera for you guys. <laughs> Thursday tomorrow afternoon if anyone fancies. Where uh, am uh, I? Who are these people? Does this meeting suck, or is my medication wearing off? So now we're going to catch up with um, Pat, who's been working on all the hatches. Uh, he's done an amazing job on the main companionway, which you guys have seen already. It's covered up now. And the forward companionway, which is uh, pretty much done and he's now working on the skylight hatch so let's go say hi. Hey Pat. Hey. Well I'm working on the combing for the skylight. Uh -huh. So um, <clears throat> worked out a dovetail layout for it and these were the two long sides. I'm not going to put it together it's a pretty tight fit but you mm -hmm. can see how that uh, stub goes into there. Yep. And then those actually do fit together like that. Yeah, it's looking really nice. Um, we're aiming to get the deck uh, caulked and um, the seams paid uh, ASAP. Yeah. Um, and we probably want to wait till this is bolted through the sill and the deck structure before caulking right around this. It would be good to get this down this week and then this bolted down just you know, as soon as mm -hmm. it's practical. Right. Should be able to. Fantastic. Yeah. Looking really nice. And then of course the uh, forward companionway hatch is looking beautiful. Is it, is it nice to see it varnished? It is. So the construction of this is pretty much just like the larger aft one. Mm -hmm. You can see the corner post detail here. Yeah. Well, that was done and those will actually be exposed. Yeah, 
Oh, it's looking really beautiful. Yeah, so that goes on. Oh, there we go. That's how that's yeah. going to look. Very nice. We'll Just do got the to glass. get some glass and yep. some bars and some hinges. Very good. Well, thanks, Pat. Sure. Hello, Patrick. Hey, Leo. How are you? Doing great. Just getting measurements, you know? Uh-huh. 80 inches. 80 inches? That's how big of a trim piece we need. Okay, cool. I'll get that ordered. Yeah. So, obviously you've been working on this for quite a while, and it's looking really good. It's a complex, big project. In this video, we're not going to show the whole process, because there's too much footage. <laughs> too much footage. So we're just doing a snapshot of what it's like right now, and then later on I'm going to show sort of start to finish. So this, obviously, well, I don't know if it's obvious or not, maybe not, it's a fridge. It's a fridge! And we were waiting for this fridge for a long time. Let's put it in. Then we're gonna lift it over the thing. And yeah. Also this sink, like, oh man, I can't even. The oven is gonna go right here. We got the fridge here. There's gonna be a work surface on top with lift out, lift off lids, um, and then the sink. Faucet's gonna go right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Crazy. We're, I thought it was gonna be front mode. We're mounted. rewriting the rule book here. <laughs> so uh, now yeah. that everything's in, all I'm doing is I'm cutting all the mortises for the hinges and I'm gonna install the latches where they go. And then this entire thing has to come out of the boat for Epoxying the plywood around the oven bay and varnishing the cherry front. Also some lovely drawers down here with varying sizes. People with sailing experience are going to say, Wow, the galley shouldn't be like that. It should be a wraparound galley and it should have the sink closest to the companionway. And there's always compromises when designing anything. And in this case, one of the compromises was that I decided to lower the sole a little bit from the original so that I can actually stand up in here um, because originally the sole was a lot higher. Because we have a more or less flush deck, we don't have a big cabin there. Um, that means the sole is actually really quite low in the boat and so it's very narrow. And for that reason, a wraparound galley, which is where the galley wraps around you, uh, wouldn't work in here because the the walkway has to be along the center of the boat because the sole is so narrow. There's a lot of other considerations as well with this particular layout. The cooker, for instance, has to go here because any further forward uh, it would hit the frames when it gimbals. Um, there's other similar constraints with the fridge and the sink and the plumbing and the chart table and so on and so on. So for all those reasons we went with what we call a line galley and uh, there are nice things about that and disadvantages. Uh, we'll have to make sure that um, when you're cooking at sea and you're on a starboard tack, there's something you can brace against so you don't get thrown across the boat. The man cuts a quarter out of a donut. Are you complaining now? <laughs> Here you go. See you. Oh, thanks. Well, as you guys know, costs recently have been really, really crazy. Uh, we've been able to continue thanks to mainly the generosity of you guys, uh, but also we've been doing some integrated ads. And I'm pleased to say that this video is sponsored by Blue Nile, the original online jeweler. My precious. My precious. Hey, Gull. What's so special about your ring? It was crafted in the fires of Mordor. Well, that sounds like an awful lot of work. You know you can go to BlueNile.com where they have a wide range of top quality jewelry at the best price. It's super easy and convenient to shop online and there's guaranteed service for life. What special powers does this necklace hold? Will it cloak my soul in invisibility? No, Gollum. Blue Nile's expert guidance helped us choose this necklace specially for you. Plus, it'll make you look really good. Is it insured, packaged discreetly, and shipped quickly? It sure is. Smeagol is pretty! Smeagol is beautiful! Smeagol is beautiful! Whether your loved one is a 600-year-old hobbit or not, 
you can go to BlueNile.com to find your perfect jewellery gift today. Go to the link in the video description and use code SAMPSON for $50 off purchases over $500. And big thanks to Blue Nile for sponsoring this video, paying for some of our spa work, and a big meal out for the whole crew. Well, now it's time to interrogate Clifton next. This is the uh, hatch for the lazarette, mm -hmm. um, tucked in right behind the uh, cockpit combing. Um, this stick, I think, is older than a lot of the other stuff. I think I bought it off of a retired guy who had a bunch of wood in his garage that he bought oh, nice. 40 years ago. <laughs> Got a lot of uh, dominoes in this part. It's going to be nice and strong. You'll be able to dance around on it a little bit. Maybe uh, maybe pull it off and serve as a uh, cockpit table. Oh. Oh, and what's it going to sit on? Can you uh, talk about the sill that you made, the, the combing you made? Here I have uh, the combing the, for the lazarette hatch. Little dovetail joint, just one. Uh, actually, that's two half dovetails and a pin uh, if you're getting technical. There's a little messing around because there's a rabbit on the top and there's a rabbit on inside at the bottom. When the hatch is in place, this will be the cockpit combing and a little teak gutter for any water that drips past the hatch. So one of the hardest things about this project is how to tell the story and show all the different parts that are going on at the same time. And most people probably don't realize how many different things are going on at once here. So it's impossible to put them all into one video uh, and often projects might be going on for, for weeks or months even um, and then trying to keep uh, the sort of the timeline making sense in the videos, it just gets all really complicated. So just to sort of help show um, the scale and the complexity of this project, uh, I'm just gonna run through all the members of the team that are working here at the moment and what jobs they're doing right now. So in no particular order, Erica is doing freshwater plumbing, bilge pump plumbing, bilge pump wiring, and gray water plumbing. Clifton right now is working on the lazarette hatch combing, the hatch lids, and details in the cockpit. Zeal right now is working on the rudder hardware, hanging the rudder itself, and the trim tab construction, as well as some deck corking. George right now is working on the settee framing, the settee uh, panels and lockers, the wood burner stand, wood lockers, and the engine room uh, diesel tank panels. Patrick is working on the galley cabinetry, which uh, includes uh, mounting the fridge, the sink, the cooker, uh, and he's also working on the chart table area. Bob uh, is doing a lot of work on the rig drawings, uh, which are really important right now uh, to start the work on the sails. Uh, he's also working on a lot of uh, bronze hardware design for the rig and the deck, uh, and he is working on constructing the blocks. Joe is working on the diesel system plumbing, the heater installation, the electrical panel planning, uh, and installing an exhaust valve, uh, as well as just keeping an overview of the system's work. Nick has been working on the engine room door, uh, and is also currently working on the head cabinetry, the uh, aft cabin, and the head doors, uh, and also the uh, vanity sort of basin uh, in the aft cabin. Pat is working on the skylight hatch, combing the skylight hatch itself uh, and some finishing details on the forward companionway hatch. Bailey, who you guys haven't actually met yet, uh, is doing finish work, so she's working on uh, a lot of varnish and painting. Everyone on this list is paid and that all comes either directly or indirectly through this YouTube channel. Now some of the crew did start out here uh, as volunteers originally, uh, just helping out because they wanted to be involved, uh, but since then, thanks to the generosity and support of people watching this channel, they've all been able to become a professional paid marine tradespeople. Uh, and that's really gratifying for me to see that uh, happening through this project. And I think really good for the whole team as well. Now I didn't include myself on this list. My main job, the thing which takes up most of my time is honestly just project management at the moment. It's making sure that all these jobs are able to progress smoothly without interruption. And that means a lot of design work, a lot of logistical work, a lot of ordering, a lot of talking through problems, um, a lot of solving unforeseen issues, um, a lot of communication, and of course, endless planning, uh, a lot of accounting, writing invoices, writing checks, um, all that sort of thing, and trying to keep the vision of the project as a whole. Now all that stuff probably takes up 75% of my time. Uh, then another 25% of my time is spent uh, filming and editing these videos. Uh, and then another 25% of my time, uh, maybe if I'm lucky, is spent doing actual woodworking. Uh, and I know that adds up to 125%. Uh, and 
any mathematicians will be really angry at me, but that's what it feels like. In terms of woodworking that I'm doing, I'm mainly focusing when I can uh, on the companionway steps, which you guys saw in the last video, uh, and also the hatches that protect the electrical panel underneath them, uh, and I'm working towards hopefully uh, building the cap rail. What are you up to, Nick, with that lovely piece of plywood? <laughs> uh, I am mocking up the small vanity for the ha the master bedroom. The off cabin? The off cabin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so this is going to be, I'm making a little sink thing that will hold a sink and a faucet. Uh, so we can see if we like the design before I start with the cherry. Cool. You are the, uh, the, the vanity master. Yeah, I'm very vain. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna whip this up real quick and then chuck it in the boat. So maybe you can uh, film when something more interesting is happening. <laughs> Sounds good. Now, as I know I'm going to the Maritime Center later, uh, I need to write a check for uh, Robert, who is managing the spa project down there. Now, I felt I was able to outsource the spa project to Robert uh, because someone actually uh, promised to fund it, which is amazing. Um, unfortunately, that funding uh, hasn't come through yet. Uh, I'm still keeping my fingers crossed, but it's gone pretty quiet and I'm pretty worried about it. So uh, for the last several months, I've been paying their uh, invoices twice a month uh, myself. Uh, and they're doing an amazing job and I do not resent it at all, but it's definitely a cost which I was not expecting. So this one is for uh, just over $13,000. So obviously, I mean, it is a big expensive project, um, but for what I'm getting, for what they're doing, they're charging me a very reasonable rate. Just is uh, a huge amount of work to make spas of that quality. Nick and me. Nick yeah. and me. Well, why don't you just say me and Nick? Because it's wrong, okay? We're sophisticated. <laughs> it's rude. This is a gentleman's yacht. Okay. Gentleman and gentlemen have proper diction. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a mock-up. Kind of what we do is we mock things up and then we talk about how it looks and how it feels and how it works in space. So the question is, what does Leo think about it? I have no opinion. <laughs> <laughs> hey, typically he says nothing, we just go for it. I don't think there's enough room for faucet. Yeah. I think we could curve this off pretty nicely under here. Yeah. If, if it was floating. <clears throat> and that would improve the aesthetics quite a bit. I don't hate it, I don't love it. Yeah, I definitely don't love it. Yeah. I think I might order that other sink. So, just so we can have a good look at what that looks like. Um, this just so... Oh, no. Oh, God. That's a this, bronze. This is a bronze basin that was uh, given to me and it came out of another boat. It'd be cool to use it. The bronze basin isn't the most practical in some ways, but in other ways it's super tough. But the problem is it's just a little bit bigger than we wanted in here and we're kind of having to compromise. Should we go eat some lunch? Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's eat some lunch. Okay, it's lunchtime. Lunchtime. <laughs> Now one of the biggest and most challenging jobs that's been going on over the last few weeks and months is a job which really doesn't come across well on camera and that is designing the rig, uh, the spars, the hardware, the rigging, the sails and so on. Now of course we do have Albert Strange's original drawings but there's a lot of detail missing on those and there's some things that we're changing from that drawing because we're trying more or less to replicate the fast net winning rig of 1927. Now there's been a lot of very talented people involved in that design work and one of those is Bob Downs uh, who you guys met quite a while ago when he was installing the channels on either side of the hull. Since then he hasn't been on camera very much but he's been really busy doing a lot of designing, uh, a lot of mocking up work to do with the tiller, the horse, uh, the sheet leads, the uh, cavil cleats and all sorts of other stuff uh, on the deck. He's also started making the blocks for the rigging which is really exciting and we're going to talk more about that in another episode. But his most critical job has been to make a scale drawing of the rig uh, with a lot of details uh, regarding hardware and spars and cutaways and sails and so on. 
and that drawing will let all the different people involved, especially the sail makers and the spa makers, uh, talk to each other to make sure that everything is actually going to fit together properly in the end. Now the drawing is nearly complete, which means uh, we're almost able to get started on the sails. Uh, one of the last steps is for us just to go over to the maritime centre uh, and double check some dimensions uh, on the actual physical spars. And we've got a couple of stops to make on the way. So Bob and I are just walking down uh, at the marina, down to a boat which has some winches on it which we want to look at because they might be the style and brand that we uh, might put on Tally Ho. Coming aboard like it's my boat, it is not. <laughs> Peter and Jen own this lovely boat. My name is Ian Weedman. I run the Brian Toss Yacht Riggers shop over in Point Hudson at the other end of town. Um, we are on Varia, which is one of our rigger, Jen Bates' boat. She and her husband, Peter Bates, uh, Rhodes 27, uh, that the shop re-rigged a while back. And we are on a mission to help Leo finish the tally ho and build his rig for the boat. Um, we're part of that crew. We'll be building the standing and the running rig. A little bit about us. We're a small shop. There's five of us in there carrying on Brian Toss's legacy. All of us in the shop, um, including Bob, who's you have met Bob, he's part of this rig, have spent a number of years working with Brian, um, doing everything from traditional to contemporary rigging. Uh, who is Brian Toss? Gosh. Um, well, I'll just start from the back. We lost Brian to cancer about three years ago. Um, but uh, Brian devoted himself to the art and craft of rigging. He was such a great teacher, he was able to distill that information to other riggers, other sailors, lay people alike. And I think he also understood that the art of rigging had the potential to be a dying art. There's not too many of us left anymore. And his way to keep it alive was to teach it. So I was an apprentice in his shop, Bob was an apprentice in his shop, Jen, Peter, Matt, a number of the crew we have down there now, all apprenticed with him went on and did other rigging in their careers, worked with other people. But he understood that the way to, to keep this art alive was to teach it to others. Plenty of power right there on that one. Yeah. Okay, so now Bob and I are on our way to the Maritime Center, uh, where Robert and his crew are building the spas. And we've got a couple of things to do this end of town, one of which is uh, take some measurements uh, of the spas to just make sure that our drawings are correct, the sail makers, and I gotta meet a couple other people, drop a couple other things off. Now the spas have progressed a huge amount since uh, you guys last saw them, which was the mast being glued up. Um, I'm not gonna get too much into the detail of what's been done, and I'm not gonna show too much of the spas right now because I wanna save that for a dedicated video, uh, but we're gonna get a little glimpse of what's going on um, while we take some measurements. Thanks, Bob. Right. The hill. So we are putting the final touches on a revised version of the sale plan that we can give to the sale makers so that they have all the information, accurate information they need to start building sales. Their sail makers tend to be pretty nervous about cutting sales for boats that aren't finished yet. So we are in the spar shop and we're just going to do a triple check final measurement to confirm the dimensions of the spars as built. We'd love to pull a tape on all oh, okay. if possible, but we'll start here. Zero yeah, let's go from the top ten. of the fifth hole. Okay. Is it looking really good, Doug? Have you been having fun? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what time I get to work with spruce. <laughs> yeah. Or <All right>. plastic. <laughs> <laughs> What's that a little bit for? This is the the shiv guard for the top so higher. That's right there. Yeah. I mean, obviously I knew that, but. 
Yeah, if there's a line on there for the goose neck, measure from there. So anyway, Leo, welcome to my shop. Thanks. This little corner of Point Hudson that I've been hiding in for, well, within a couple hundred yards of here for about 45 years. I'm gonna carve you a bowsprit out of a hundred year old timber that used to hold up the Salvation Army in Seattle. Dry for a hundred years and waiting for you for about three. Fantastic. That are just spectacular pieces of wood. Nice to see your workshop, Bruce. Very excited to see what you do with this bowsprit. This will be fun. And yeah. excited to see the timber. Uh, we'll be back to check in with you I hope at some so. point. And I have a check for you. Thanks. Yeah, Very thank much. you. Yeah, really uh, happy to work with you. Yeah, it's cool. Um, good. Perfect. Well, we'll be on our way. All right. So I'm back in the office. Now I'm just doing a bunch of office work. It's really boring. Uh, filling out payment authorization forms and tax forms and things to do with uh, the the ads we're doing and revenue from the YouTube channel. So exciting stuff. Uh, ironically, I do more office work in this job now than in any job I've ever had. So it turns out that trying to even get just a little bit of footage of everyone and all the jobs in one day is actually really difficult. I'm running out of time, so I'm just gonna run around and get a, a quick update of what the rest of the crew are up to this afternoon. What are you up to, bud? Uh, fixing pieces of oak that have like defects in them. For? For the aft cabin and head doors. George, hi. what are you up to right now? I am working on a stand that will go in the engine room that uh, the water heater will sit on. Very good, thanks. I am securing the midship bilge pump hose. Excellent. Leo, today mostly I've been trying to order stuff, uh, figuring out how to make sure we have all the parts we need so that we don't run into any roadblocks right. where we uh, need to get something and find that it's, it's unobtainable. So, <laughs> yep, cool. doing a lot of that lately and starting to figure out some of the wire runs also. Excellent. Uh, what are the other big jobs going on in the engine room at the moment? Heater. The heater's a big job. So yeah, we just uh, designed the exhaust, all the exhaust components for it. It's going to be TIG welded 316 stainless steel and go through the aft bulkhead and lazarette. Thanks, Jeff. Mm-hmm. I'm just doing a, a quick update of what everyone's up to and I don't want to give away too much of the beautiful work you've been doing because I want to make a whole video about it. Uh, I'm doing more rudder work today. So now that all the pintles are fit and the forward face of the whole thing is shaped, I did uh, some shaping, just a lot of hand tooling, which is fun, adds work. Dusty. Yes, I know, you're cute. Okay, Zora, say hi to YouTube. Say hi to YouTube. <laughs> That's great. Thanks. All right, when you're ready. All right, guys, here we are at the stern, uh, looking at the Lazarette hatch combing. Uh, so Leo didn't get it on film because I'm just too fast and he was too busy documenting the rest of the crew. But uh, here we are, bedded down with TDS. Uh, still a little wet, so don't touch it. Again, I'd like to point out 
Uh, my favorite feature of the Lazarette hatch combing is the teak gutter integrated. Um, so, I mean, that's just a really nice gutter, man. It's teak. Well, it's now a couple of days later uh, and I'm now editing this video. Now, pretty much all this footage was from Tuesday, a tiny bit from Wednesday, uh, and then I spent uh, some time on Wednesday editing and all day yesterday, Thursday, and um, probably will be all day today. So depending on the day of the week, this is also uh, what my day might look like. Now it takes me about an hour of editing per minute of finished video. So a 30 minute video might take about 30 hours um, and that's sort of industry standard. And I normally do that uh, through the day on Thursday and Friday before the video is released, um, sometimes starting uh, a little earlier, sometimes editing pretty late on Thursday and Friday nights. Well, that's about it from me. I know this has been uh, kind of a long video and uh, maybe boring, maybe interesting, I'm not sure, a little bit different from normal. I hope it's been interesting uh, and has given a little bit of insight into uh, how this project actually works a little more behind the scenes. And I try and express this in every video, but uh, I just want to say how incredibly grateful I am for uh, the community and everyone who watches and supports this project and these videos. Uh, I really can't believe uh, what this project has turned into. Uh, it's sort of taken a route I could never have predicted and um, you know we were able to be doing some pretty amazing things and that's thanks to you guys so I'm just totally grateful and uh, sort of in awe of what's happening so thank you and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Uh, someone of course is acting as, as a Smeagol or Gollum. <laughs> He's looking at me. Savvy, <laughs> Someone else, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe Frodo Baggins, who knows? Yeah, I wonder who that's gonna be. Son of a Baggins, you Get your feet. Get us to see your feet. You're on that kind of channel. It's been a very productive meeting. And there's guaranteed service for life. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> I can see you. Put that in there. Ah! <laughs> 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 that was great.